Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Today I wanted to talk about power frames, what makes a frame powerful, what are some of the best ones in the market. We'll go through uh, some links and clips from Tennis Warehouse, uh, which I usually do, there are affiliates, so if you buy something through my links, Tennis Warehouse, Tennis Warehouse Europe, Tennis Only, I get a small commission, which I'm very grateful for. Thanks a lot for that. First of all, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. They sponsored a bunch of different videos. I use their online classes to learn new things. I'm, I'm, I'm really into uh, growing my knowledge about certain topics that I like. If you want to try Skillshare, check out the link in the description below where you can get a free premium trial. It's available to the first 1000 subscribers. So it's less than $10 a month on a yearly subscription if you decide to uh, stay with Skillshare Premium. What you can find on Skillshare, I talked about tennis classes before I showed you one in a previous video. Other things that I like, I've talked about video editing. Uh, I also like cooking. Uh, it's a recent passion of mine that I'm getting into. Creative dishes and recipes and I also play guitar. I've been playing guitar for many years, but if you want to learn the fingerstyle guitar, which is kind of the thing I play the most, you can check out the fingerstyle guitar for beginners course by Kurt Berg. I'm a chess player, as I've said before. They might even have chess classes. I mean, check that out. Yes, they do. 300 search results only on chess. So there's pretty much anything if you want to kind of dive deeper into a topic and learn a new thing. And so I can really recommend Skillshare. I really want to thank them for sponsoring Tennis Nerd. Over to the video. Uh, so a power frame, it's all about stiffness. It's all about a thick beam. Give you a lot of uh, power back. L not so much dwell time in the string bed. It's just going to give you uh, shoot the ball back towards your opponent. And uh, it can be harsh feeling in some cases, these powerful frames. So you need to tread with caution when how you string the frame and what tension you use and so on. But they are addictive to play with. You get a lot of pace for free. Uh, they're quite stable thanks to the stiffness and the thick beam. And they usually have quite an open and large string bed. So meaning that you get a, a pretty chunky sweet spot. So there are benefits, but they can be hard to control. They don't always have the best feel when it comes to touch shots. But uh, if you like the, the power and spin levels and you, that's what you need for your game, you want a bit of help from the racket, these are kind of frames you should look at. There are various different things to take into consideration. One that I keep uh, yapping about is the stiffness rating. Try not to go too high, try, not, try to read reviews, not only mine, check out reviews and, and get an, a feel for is this racket going to be harsh for me or even better, demo it yourself. because. Uh, you don't want to have a tennis elbow, uh, it's a really rough experience. Uh, I've suffered from it from time to time, not so much tennis elbow, but really stiff forearm that bothers me uh, at times and uh, I don't recommend it to anyone. To, uh, so avoid that, use softer strings, use lower tensions, then you can also play with powerful frames. Um, there are a few obvious uh, rackets in this category, the Pure Drive, it's always been going strong. I'm kind of bit more biased towards older pure drives uh, because I, I like the feel better. I think the, tight, the pattern was tighter back then, uh, but they're still good if you like power. Uh, you have the Dunlop FX line, the FX500 is a racket I really like. Felt like it was a little bit too stiff for me, uh, but I used it with a poly, so I should maybe have tried it with a softer poly or, a, or lower the tension a little bit. There's also the Wilson Ultra, nice power frame. Uh, gives you nice injection of pace, not the best feeling one in my opinion, but that's another story. There's the Diadem Nova, uh, unknown brand for many, but, but actually makes some really good rackets. Really like that frame, was a bit lower in stiffness, so I did, uh, did enjoy that when I reviewed it. For all these frames you can find the reviews on this channel by searching, or you can check out tennisner.net and find them there. One of my favorite ones, the Head Instinct MP, uh, it's just uh, a bit lower in stiffness, Nice controlled string pattern, uh, gives you good power and spin, but it's not too much, not exaggerating these metrics. And um, those are the kind of tweeners that are not too far off in the power scale. If you want to go all in on power, there are things you should consider. You should get an extended length, um, you should get an oversized frame. Stiffness is obviously nice if it's high, if you, it's all you think about is power. So big head size, thick beam, and you're going to get loads of power. However, uh, unless you're a beginner, I don't recommend going all out in the power category. If you're 80 years old, you need a lot of help from the frame, you have shorter swings, sure, go for this uh, mega oversized big Baba style rackets. 
but generally I, I would recommend trying to to not uh, go all in there but but have a racket that you need to generate some power with because it's going to help your game going to help your arm generally and uh, it's it's uh, a little bit more recommended you can still get a lot of power and spin but going in that upper region where the rackets are, are big time oversized and have loads of power it's not going to be easy to control those frames i will prepare a video in more in the beginner lower level intermediate category as well so for you who are looking for all the possible help you can get from a racket check that video out that's going to come later on this one is more for you who are maybe uh, intermediate too advanced but you want more help from the frame we love the prestigious we love the old classics but when we're playing with these newer modern stiffer more powerful frames we get more help and it, it helps us play better tennis especially when we get to a match situation we don't need to always prepare and and make sure we're always in on time we, we can be a bit lazier uh, which might help and we can focus maybe more on where we're going to hit the ball than the technique and that's what i see a lot of recreational players do myself included we focus so much on the technique and the, how the stroke looks especially if you record yourself like i do that sometimes we forget about the strategy in matches and where to place the ball and and how to handle that uh, you can check out essential tennis and their uh, mep series they're a series of matches where the most exhausting player as he's called who plays very unorthodox tennis with a lot of forehand slices a lot of chips he's a kind of natural born pusher in a way uh, i didn't used to respect these players i used to think that was not tennis i used to hate tennis after playing with these guys i'm not thinking that like that anymore i do really respect their mental strength their court craftsmanship their idea to kind of frustrate the opponent make draw out some errors it's also a, a fine strategy to use in tennis and it's very hard to defeat and if they play well and beat you even if it's a pusher you just have to say hey he was better on that day you didn't find a solution that was a tangent a powerful frame will give you more energy return be stiffer you generally they have a quite large head more open pattern relatively more easy to use and you might not have to go all the way to the extreme oversized frames you can stay within a certain region to get rackets that you can control the power level of and actually get some some extra depth in as well so let's now check my top rackets in this category i'm keen to hear what you think of these rackets if you have any experience with them uh, please comment below and if i missed anything that i should try uh, i can't try everything uh, because i'm only one guy please let me know that in the comments as well Okay, so we end up in the usual place, the Tennis Warehouse website. Uh, power frames, I've already gone through a few of them. I wanted to kind of give you an idea of how they differ. As I've said before, I, I like powerful rackets that have a tighter string bed. I said the same with the spin rackets, so please check my video about more spin-oriented rackets. But I do like a tighter string bed. I think it gives you that extra control that you need when you have a stiffer frame that will give you more energy to return. So in this case, uh, the Dunlop FX500 that I, you see here is one of my favorites because it's, it has a tighter string pattern. I also recently reviewed the Ehead Instinct MP, which is another favorite of mine, a little bit less stiff than the, the FX500. So that's why I, I prefer the Instinct. And 
but I was surprised how playable and uh, and pretty arm friendly it was. Uh, so uh, I really like that the instinct. I think the Dunlop would be a a close second. When it comes to Wilson frames and power, it's um, the Ultra was a little bit weird in feel to me. 73 stiffness, 312 swing weight, so a low swing weight and a high stiffness, not the best combo usually if you want to save your arm. I didn't really notice any arm issues, but there's no uh, dampening material at all here, so I'm not sure what's going on with this racket. It uh, When it comes to feel, I preferred the Instinct and the Dunlop. Uh, it was pretty okay to play. I Played pretty well with it. Uh, it was very easy to use, and uh, I know some players that really like this. This is from my personal opinion, but I felt like it was, it was uh, I had a bit of a weird stiff feel, but not harsh. So um, it's not my favorite. I mentioned the Yonex E Zone 100 briefly. I did test the prototype. I haven't really tried this one properly, so one of the most po powerful ones. Uh, I know some college players that use this one. Really like it. The isometric head shape will give it a bigger sweet spot. The stiffness is not uh, not ultra high, but pretty high. So you have to be a bit careful with with your arm. If you have any arm issues, I don't think the dampening material will be enough in pretty much any of these frames to save your arms. Please make sure that if you have any tennis elbow issues that you go for more arm friendly rackets like Pro Kenex, the Wilson Clash, the Head Gravity, um, rackets that are made for arm comfort. Prince, they do a lot of nice, uh, comfortable frames uh, that also has some power, but but they're more focused on comfort. So do, uh, try to avoid then these all-out power frames. Uh, just a small warning uh, not to give you any more arm issues or, or, or kind of extenuate those those problems. Babola, the Pure Drive 2021, it was more muted than previous rackets. Good racket, plenty of power. Mine was really huge in swing weight. Uh, they, all these brands have quality control issues. As I said before, Yonex is the best one, but uh, they've also had some ups and downs recently from what I've heard of, of retail customers, but uh, generally they're, they're better than, than the other big ones that you can get a, a, a pure drive that's 300. 35 in swing weight strong is, is with with a normal poly string that doesn't add any excessive weight to the frame uh, is, is a little bit too much so um, uh, That can happen with any of these brands, but it happened to me when I reviewed the pure drive uh, Swing weight is higher with the pure drive uh, the latest one So it's a little bit more to swing the swing weight can help your arm in certain cases because it has more more stability There's more mass to impact the ball But it can also make you hit the ball late and mistime the ball, which will aggravate your any potential arm issues you might have. But the Pure Drive should be in there. It's an iconic frame. Uh, I've really liked the previous uh, Pure Drives, especially with the tighter string patterns. As I've said, they used to have tighter string patterns uh, back in the day. Uh, same with the Aero Pro Drive. They were pretty tight patterns for a spin frame, but then they opened them up, and I think that was a step in the wrong direction. Uh, but I can understand why they did it, because it gives you easier free uh, height over the net, which some players definitely like. I'm not uh, one of those. Technifiber, not a huge fan of their uh, power rackets. Uh, the, the CES was uh, quite stiff to me, and uh, not a racket I, I, I particularly enjoyed, so I'm leaving that out in case you have questions. Also higher high stiffness, 72. Uh, so that one is out. Volkel, I, I'm not testing a lot of their frames. Uh, they I haven't really been able to get any demos. Now that I'm an affiliate of Tennis Warehouse, uh, I hope they can send me demos from Tennis Warehouse Europe, which they've done now in, in recent months. It makes me really happy, easier for me to try products. So I will try uh, one or two frames from them, maybe the V-Cell 8. Interesting frame to me, I will explain why. I do like the stiffness, it means that it's a little bit lower than most of these. And what I also look at is the beam width, which is thinner in general. That's 23, 26, 23 is the most standard power beam. And the 16, 18 mains is quite intriguing. This will give more spin. Sometimes with the tighter string spacing, it's going to give less spin or more control at least. Uh, more headlight balance, just slightly more headlight balance than most of these. Um, so an interesting frame, and this is something I would like to try. If you've tried the V-Cell 8 300 grams uh, version, please let me know how it played to you. i um, really keen to hear your thoughts about that one. And they have the Reva-based handle system, which is uh, supposed to be uh, some dampening in the handle, similar to the 
VDM mesh from Yonex. And I'm going to review soon some Procanix frames, the new ones. They're not yet on the Tennis Warehouse uh, US site, but they are on Tennis Warehouse Europe. Uh, so we'll have a brief look. I'm really keen to try them. I'm waiting for a few demos and I hope you look forward to that review. I really do look forward to testing them. It's very timely considering that I'm... I suffer from a really stiff forearm, which is not really a full-blown tennis elbow, but it, it bothers me, especially on serve. So here they have rackets like the KI Q plus 5, which is 300 grams, which is the standard weight. And um, when you look at the specs, you see that stiffness is somewhat medium high. It's not all the way to the 70 or 69 that is the kind of standard power frame. Pretty beefy swing weight, curious about that thinner beam so this one is very intriguing to me how this one will play and they have the kinetic quad focus technology which has movable mass in key locations which makes the racket sound a little bit when you hit it but it really works as arm protection so if you have any arm issues the pro Kenix lineup is one to definitely check out and they have a lot of new rackets here in their lineup uh, yellow blue red and green um, there's the 15 pro which is uh, 305 grams. We can look at the specs here. Here, it's a very high stiffness, very high swing weight, extended length. So this one is gonna be a powerful frame for sure. 26 millimeter beam throughout is, is pretty nuts. I haven't seen that a lot. And uh, this is gonna be interesting if I try this one because it's, um, yeah. but this it should be a real beast when it comes to power. So Procanix, they have some interesting frames that just come out that I will hopefully review a few of them and get back to you on those. Uh, prints, power frames from prints. Yeah, well, the ripstick is the powerful frame, but it's more of a spin racket. I will, and that's why I put it in the spin category. Really love that one. In power, they don't really focus so much uh, on the power. They used to have the beast line. They have the Techstream Tour, which is one of my favorite rackets, but I wouldn't put it into a power category. It's more kind of in between all these, uh, modern frame, but with uh, pretty decent control. It's not, definitely not a power frame. They have these legacy rackets that I could um, recommend if you're more kind of a lower level player, like I talked about before. Very interesting frames with pretty good comfort. The O3 Legacy is something I've recommended before. It's actually quite a nice racket with uh, pretty high stiffness, not crazy high though. Decent swing weight, but the, the the swing weight is pretty low considering that it's slightly extended. So this one is a very highly playable frame with uh, pretty good dampening in it and uh, definitely an interesting racket for you who need kind of a game improvement frame and some free power. Uh, so the Prince O3. That's Legacy. all for this one. Have a nice uh, day. Otherwise, they don't really have much of a power sometimes. frame. The Beast, I don't know if it's going to be an update there. Uh, I really enjoyed the Beast 98 when I tried it, but it's not... A powerful frame per se. I never tried the Beast 100. Can't talk about that one. And I didn't try the Warrior line either. So let's see if there's something beefy coming from Prince. That's all pretty much that I've gone through. My favorites, the Head Instinct MP, the Dunlop FX500. Those are my two favorite ones. Uh, I think those perform the best for me. The Bubble Pure Drive is an iconic legend for a reason it's a very good racket um, e zone 100 is also an excellent frame that a lot of players like so that should be on your demo list uh, check out the vocal v cell 8 i haven't tried it but it looks like an interesting spec and if you have any arm concerns but you want power 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 go and uh, and try a pro Kenix racket they have great dampening tech I would also consider the Wilson Burn instead of the Ultra. The Burn is, is a bit of a spin category racket, but I still think it's it could be in the power category as well. Pretty tight pattern, very nice frame. The Ultra I wasn't as much a fan of as I was of the Burn.